you, Angelo, Adeline, and Ada, and you know, a really um, important way to um, tell us about the beginning of really significant piece of work and for, to have it in the minds of all of us about maybe how we can link in in a way that supports each other. So thank you, thank you all very much. And um, now it's my huge honour um, to, to welcome Elizabeth Kirikiri. So um, Francis, do you now bring Elizabeth and yes, yes, I want to have you here so I can properly welcome you. <laughs> and um, Tina Koto Katoa, Ete Marei Kura o Te Rotu Kakariki, um, Te Pau Whirinaki o Te Hapuri Kahukura, me Te Whanau Takatāpui. Tō mātou tākuta i Te Whare Mieri, te nā koe. Um, ko te reo o Te Nā Kau tēnei e mihi atu nei ki a koe. Ia kaupapa, Ia kaupapa, ia kaupapa, koi tu ai, ki te tautoko, ki te awhina, ki te whakarongo. Um, noku te onore, ki te whakamohio, atu, ia koe. No mātou, te maringi nui, ki te whakarongo, ki tō korero i tēnei rā. So um, it's my honour, Elizabeth, to um, oh, Dr. Elizabeth Kirikiri, <laughs> um, to welcome you to come and speak today as we um, the end of our PATHA symposium. Um, it's an opportunity to deeply thank you and acknowledge what is your lifetime work and advocacy for Takatapui and your commitment to the health and well-being of trans and non-binary people which you've demonstrated through your work in the community and, and now from your work within Parliament. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Oh, tēnā koe, <laughs> tēnā koutou. Uh, uh, ko tai mai ki te, kaupa, ki te tautoko tēnei kaupapa i pāna ki a mātou. Uh, I've been introduced at many, many things and I've never cried <laughs> from the introduction. Thank you. It is a privilege always, always. And Jack, we have known each other for many, many, a few decades now and, and done so many projects together. I thank you. I thank all of the people in our trans non-binary intersex communities that have always spoken with me, listened to me, and I just have such a sense of the groundswell of all of our combined work. And so I'm mihi to all of those who have gone before us, who didn't have names for who they were, who did to live their lives, having clarity, taking the discrimination, but also the love that came with that. That these things have built up and built up. I was going to talk about my Whare Takatāpui framework and how I've developed that. I think some of you will be familiar and absolutely whakapapa, always acknowledging where we have come from um, and what are our connections, because whakapapa can never be a, a linear a linear process. It's how we expand out our relationships between ourselves are as important. Absolutely respecting the mana of anybody, anybody at all to define who they are, to be able to live that life, to have all of their documents reflect that, that whether that's in the education system, the health system, in any part of our life that requires a piece of paper because apparently everyone needs to know your gender or your sex, depending on how you want to use those terms uh, before they can accept you as any kind of person. Modi, because expression is all about it. I could not possibly have, I came on for the, for the test of this. It's like, what, there's no flowers in my hair, I feel naked. And so there's a certain way, each of us, no matter what that is, where it's my wife with her jeans and t-shirts, or it's me with this. Uh, that it's our choice. 
no one else should get to have a say. They should just get the opportunity to enjoy it. Sapu, because there are so many ways in which people in our communities and particularly our trans non-binary intersex whānau have been hurt on a deeply personal level, but absolutely systematic, physical, spiritual ways. 35 years ago when we were, I was a little person, young person, baby activist, and we we're marching down the streets of Dunedin for homosexual law reform. I kept all my posters from those times that listed all the churches and all the organizations who represented the 60% of New Zealanders who did not want that law to pass. And to be in the hearings right now for, for the conversion therapy and for BDMRR and hearing every single one of those churches, all the mainstream churches being there and advocating for trans non-binary and intersex people blows my mind. I'm so, so thankful. And, and advocating for Takatapui. It's incredible to me that all of these years of research and, and all the submissions, collectively, I know some of the people who are in the room and I could have listened to Angelo and Ada just keep on talking. I know that you will have had incredible speakers and that each of you are involved in changing the world in your individual communities, schools, wherever you're operating, but collectively, that's what the hearings show. There's still some haters out there. Oh, they're gonna be so sad when they lose everything. Um, I feel no sympathy about the upsetness they would have that their bell versus Tavistock was overturned. But the groundswell of mainstream organizations, of mainstream churches saying this is unacceptable, this type of discrimination is unacceptable and being on record and apologizing for what they have done in the past, taking responsibility. So even though we have to sit through, and I'm so sorry that those select hearings are not safe spaces, they're barely safe enough for me, but I do not have lived experience of any of the things that we're hoping to legislate for. The very least I can do is be a witness. The very least I can do is to keep fighting to make sure all of the issues that are consistently being brought up to make sure they get put into that bill. There's no point doing these bills if they don't actually need, meet the needs of our communities. Just then it's just a tick, tick exercise. Oh, look what we did. And actually all of the things that our leaders, our advocates have said, you must make sure this happens to make it real. If those are not in there, then it was, that cannot. So that won't happen. We will not let that happen. And you have so many allies, so many allies in parliament. I've been proud to be on those committees with our Labour colleagues who are staunch as advocates and allies, uh, but even behind the scenes, having conversations with our National and ACT colleagues because they do not understand the issues. They're under massive pressure, but I believe that we will be stronger if we can have unanimous support in those final readings. What it feels to me is there's the groundswell in terms of things uh, building up, building up, that collective work, that collective passion, but also I feel that things are speeding up. And so for me, I want to know what we're doing next. I want to be really clear and get direction from you. It's like, right, depending on what we can get through on each of these two bills that are currently happening, what are the extreme next steps? So for example, many, many people have brought up and raised the issue of um, uh, gender, gender norm normalizing surgery on intersex um, infants. That is, cannot be part of the conversion therapy bill. However, the select committee has the power to direct the ministry to do legislation on it. So this has been the, that groundswell and being consistent on what the issues are across our communities that will be the fallout, the fallout, the occurrence um, out of that. 
And so the consistency of everyone's submissions and raising key issues to say, this is how we can make it better. This will be much better for all of us. Um, think again, the leadership of our trans non-binary whanau. Your submission guidelines, your draft proposals, all of those things that were used across the board by so many organizations. And that's the last thing I'll say is when I spoke at the first reading of the BDMRR, and I said, we don't always know who our allies are. And I think that this conversion therapy hearings have shown us that, that actually there's all these organizations that are willing to go into bat. Let us call on them. Let us keep on moving. Tamati Coffee's uh, surrogacy members bill also got pulled. It's three rainbow bills this year. That is so, so powerful. I've always said change happens on certain levels and some of it can only happen in parliament. It is a great privilege for me to have been elected and to do this work. And as I've always said, I haven't stopped what I'm doing. I now I get paid for it and I've got resource. So let me help use that resource to say, what's the next thing? What's the thing after that? If I only had three years, I'm going to go out in style. But I expect to be here a lot longer. So thank you for having me. I know that you could have had so many other people um, speak or have other people speak longer and you've carved out space for me. And I want to thank you very, very much and open the floor for if there's any questions that you would like to ask. Because as I said to Jack, I know there's a lot of people I love here. <laughs> Even though I can't see you, I know you're there. Yeah, Elizabeth, and yes, there's, there's some questions here. There's a bit of a theme of people saying with, um, there's a bit of a theme where um, with the oral submissions, but also the ongoing next stages of mm. the, both the, the bill to ban conversion practices and, you know, SOP 59 <laughs> and Beth's just narratives. Um, are there particular things that is useful for people to do right now? Like, are there things where maybe other people on the select committee need a little bit of courage? And there are things we can do that will help give them that courage um, or nuances to what people have been saying. Some of us still have our oral submissions to do and can go do it through that processes. Are there particular politicians we should be reaching out to? Um, any, any of that that you're free to talk about? I think if, if you're happy with how some of the, um, the ally MPs have been operating the select committee, I know that they'll, because we're taking a lot of crap, <laughs> um, feel free to a quick email saying to thank them. Uh, that I know that that will be really appreciated because we are all inundated every day with really horrible messages and emails from people saying why we should not support this bill. Uh, I think, and I know that the um, national and ACT members have always said that could, people could reach out to them. Uh, the, I believe the anti-trans groups think they have allies and put a lot of pressure on the national and ACT MPs. And so I think it'll be great just to, to reach out to them. The one thing I can say is the most powerful submissions are the ones where people share their personal stories. And I don't want you all to go in there and spill your guts because you know you have to do that enough in the world and educate everyone all the time. But I know from their reactions, we, we've got so many hundreds and hundreds of submissions we read through and the themes are quite consistent, but where people tell their story and talk about how it impacts on them, then that has a huge impact on the committee members. And, and I know one thing that we've discussed within the Patha Policy and Advocacy Committee, like we made a deliberate decision not to talk about puberty blockers because we thought mm. it was a red heron, but it is, you know, I've noticed, you know, 
Southern Bridges comes in at various times and asks the same question. I don't know whether he's still asking it now that Belvis' Tavistock has been overturned. But do you think there's any value in speaking to that? Because obviously within Patha we have some members, including on our, on our exec, who have a lot of expertise in this area. Well, this is an interesting thing because we are not allowed I mean, I can certainly shut down people and I've had to, but the, but we can't correct everything that people say. And we can't actually call people liars, even when they're lying. So it's really good when you have someone come on and say, actually, you know what, puberty blockers have been around, what, 50 years? Uh, there is very clear science. It's not experimental. Uh, so being very adamant about that, because no one has said that. Um, and then the, the hearings that I've been in so far. And so I, as a rule, don't like the debunking because you end up giving credence or, to, or having to repeat what anti-trans people are saying. However, there are some people on the committee who, who have no idea about what's the actual research. So they're just listening to what people are saying. And when people are saying over and over again, the jury's out, there's no conclusive evidence that they cause this and they cause that. You know, people consistently saying that puberty blockers will make you sterile. Uh, so that I think that that actually would be useful. Uh, just to say, uh, actually, they're not new, even. Would be good. And some people obviously are concerned about um, whether there's been campaigns to get international submissions. So one, can you tell if they're international submissions and if they are, are they given weight? You know, how does that work? We can't actually tell for most of them. They don't give physical addresses. We don't know that they're from overseas. And so our officials, especially for the conversion therapy with over a hundred thousand submissions, they're still trying to sift through. And I think I'm pretty sure I can say this is they sort out all of the, uh, what do you call them? The repeats, the, the form letters and the template ones. And the great thing about is about that is there might have been 20,000, it's counted as one. And, and so we're sifting through those to make sure when we're talking to people, if a whole lot of, and again, if 100 people put in the form thing, we're only going to listen to one person. And so those, um, yeah, I've segued off into, into telling that story. Um, but overseas, some of us have asked, and again, I think I can safely say this publicly, that I don't, we don't want to hear from overseas. What do they know? And, and I'm actually a bit over hearing overseas people tell me that there's no research that A, uh, conversion therapy even exists, and B, if it did, it's not that bad. Uh, it's like, could you just like step out? So we, I, I'm certainly one of the people advocating that we're, we're not interested for or against, but most of them are against. I mean, organizations that specialize in detransitioning or turning um, queer people straight. Very proud of it, they're revolting. So no, I think when you've got that many New Zealanders who've asked to speak, we should let our people speak. And I've asked also if there's some way that we can privilege people with lived experience. And um, there's another question here is, what do you see as the most important thing that supporters of trans rights can do right now to help make, move things forward? And I guess, you know, you've been a real ally to our community. So yes, yeah, so the, the specific role of organisations that, you know, aren't trans led. I think they're doing it right now as having made so many submissions, speaking to the submissions and, and having such a unified voice. You know, um, Māori Women's Welfare League, uh, National Council of Women, all of the student associations across the country, uh, just so many, all these youth organizations, all, so many church organizations all on, on your side. And so I think we just keep going, we keep pushing through this. And if it looks like, they're not going to change some of those things we need changed, getting rid of the Attorney General, for example. Um, yeah, to actually give some teeth to that bill and take out what's unnecessary, not changing the age, then I think we get ready to protest. Because I've kept saying to them, anybody who does it 
should be penalised. Anybody who suffers it should be looked after and acknowledged. It's very, very simple. Everything else is details. And, and what's becoming clearer and clearer is how this bill has been set up to try and keep everybody happy instead of look, mm. out, look after the people who are suffering and, and surviving and some not surviving, but also to be kind of pussyfooting around who's, who's doing it. The fact that you can't, under this current law, uh, prosecute an organisation, ridiculous. So I think that's the next thing is like, it'll be a long time before this gets looked at again, is chuck everything at it right now, get it as right as we can. So that would be my next thing. And I'm all up for it because we're saying this needs to be there, this needs to be there. If it's not, it's on. Labour have a uh, massive majority. They can put this through however they want. And only, the only thing that will push them is public opinion. But I'm going for the positive view. It'll be a fine. We'll sort it out in select committee, make the changes, take it through. Um, but that will be the point to fight. And um, there's, there are comments here that people have seen local anti-trans groups canvassing submissions from people overseas. So we do, you know, on Twitter. So we do know that there was campaigning to get those overseas submissions. But you're saying that it's not easy for them to be able to tell. They can't just do a IP address or something, trying to sound technical in a way that he isn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, these are not the IT people that are doing this. These are our select committee officials that take all of them and uh, and the, try and suss out which ones are form letters, put them in a group and, and, and try and see who's for or against so we can get a general idea of, of what the numbers are. Uh, but I think when you start sifting through then and and saying, right, we're going to hear from these people, I think it's fair enough to ask where they're from because it wastes our time as far as I'm concerned. Um, we had one queer organisation from overseas saying how wonderful it was and how important it was to do this. And that's great. Um, but still, we've got enough people here whose voices we need to hear. And I keep having to scroll down because there's so many people thanking you. And saying, <laughs> so I hope we can get a screenshot of all this for you um, at the end. Some of the issues people are talking to are also, oh, another question is more weight given to the opinions of professional bodies or groups rather than individuals or are they all Absolutely. Have... Okay. Absolutely. When um, the, com the committee was inundated with so many submissions, and we, I'm so happy that we, what, tripled <laughs> this number of submissions for end of life, uh, Bill. The, oh goodness, I keep, I'm, I'm reading things on the side and then I'm just gonna stop looking at the, mm. side of the chat, stop looking at the chat. Tell me the question again, please. So the question again is whether more weight's given to submissions oh, yes. from community, from okay. groups, professional so organizations. So, yes. Thank you, and sorry to just talk over you then. The, yes, when um, so many came in, they said, well, let's start with organisations and then we'll look at which individuals we hear from. Because the important thing is there's a set date. When a bill goes through, there's a set date by which we must report back. So there's a limited time uh, that we can do hearings. Uh, coming, we're already booked to do, multi, I've got three days of hearings on the BDMR next week. On um, Thursday next week, we'll be deciding on, on yeah, on Wednesday or Thursday of when how we're going to handle the rest of the conversion therapy ones. But there's a finite amount, so we have to make decisions about what we do. The privileged organisations, uh, because they're the experts, they're meant to be the leaders and experts in their field, and they are all almost all consistent. Most organisations have been um, in support, and they cannot look away from that. So even if they have a whole pile of individuals, it's like these are organised national groups that that represent this country. So they can't step away from that. So yes, definitely. However, as individuals, many people who have presented as organisations have had lived experience and they've shared that. And that has been incredibly powerful for our committee. And that's why I say, if you're coming on as an individual, share your story. Now mind about the details and the bits of 5.5 .5 point body of 
honestly, because we have all of that. And we expect that the organizations will cover it, and they do. They've gone super technical, super consistent. It's the um, it's that personal stories that tear at them because it's hard for the anti-trans lobby. They keep it very conceptual, very scaremongering, very if this is what will happen, but actually this is this this is the hurt that's happening right now. This is actual. And it's not happening to you, it's happening here. And we have to, that's the story that it's important. People talking about what's happened to their kids is powerful. Because there was one presenter on BDMR I talked about how hard it is to get puberty blockers. The anti-trans lobby make out, it's like ordering lollies at the counter. That's what they make out that it's like. And it's just, we know that that is not true. And so even that, A, there's the debunking the actual impact of them, but access to them. There's, there hasn't been, we haven't heard much of that. Um, and I think it's important that the rest of the committee hears it. Yeah, because, yeah. And we've just got like a, about another three minutes or so. Mm -hmm. And I just, I wondered if you wanted to speak specifically to with all of the work that you've been doing for our communities, you've framed it very much through a decolonization lens. So if you wanted to speak specifically to that a bit. It's very much always been my belief and, and a big part of my research was looking for examples of tanga in our past and, and following on the research of Ngahui um, Atea Wekotuku because as, as far as I can tell, I'm still only the second person that's found proof of that in pre-colonial times or, or reference to it. And so... In my mind there, I have great clarity that if we were accepted in a normal part of life, not celebrated as some people nowadays would like us to say, they did not have parades back in the day. That is not how things were. Uh, I always think we're ordinary. We're just part, as I say, part of the whānau. And so the impact of colonisation, of course, brings all of these structures, all these things that hates on people who are not cisnormative, who are not heterosexual, who are not monogamous. And, and they tried to change all of those things. And even though they were apparently successful, the memory of those things, the knowledges and experiences of our ancestors have never gone. They have stayed there. And I believe every step we take, every hui we hold, every conversation we have between us to create clarity and a shared vision is an act of decolonization. Because as I've said, if the, it was the British, imperialists that brought homophobia, transphobia, all those things that stop people being who they are, including us just to be Māori. Therefore, all of those practices are inherently racist. And so again, when I listen to these people making these submissions and echoing these revolting fundamentalist kind of viewpoints and fabricating all of these lies about our communities, and I think about the power of our young leaders. I think about people such as you, Jack, who have been doing this for decades and the ones that just keep going and keep going. And I know that everything we do is worth it. We are the acts of decolonization. We are collectively creating this groundswell. There's so many ways in which there's still things we're a bit behind a few other countries, but the way we operate happens nowhere else in the world. And I believe that part of that is our commitment to Te Reti o Waitangi, the fact that we, you probably, I'm sure, open this week with Karakia, the fact that you can mihi to me and Zereo, all of those things make us different. And what it does for me is it brings the collective power of our ancestors to our work. We are not individuals when we do this. I am never an individual when I stand up and speak. I know that I have a job to do. This is not about the Elizabeth Kirikiri show. This, I've always said my, our young people, the young people that I mentor, all of our nieces and nephews are the legacy I will leave. These pieces of legislation, I'll be very happy to add them to it. These are, none of these are in my name but I'm for sure making sure they have the Elizabeth Kirikiri stamp on them. And when we put that stamp on it, that is a stamp of Tifana Fana, that is a stamp of all our rainbow communities, because I will do nothing without checking with you first. Yeah. 
Your arm as well. Such um, powerful words. All these emojis. People are on fire out there. I think we've got. I forgot that we've got all the elements. We've got the fire and the tears. And um, I don't know if I've seen any wind or Tapatuanuku <laughs> as well. So yeah. So it's inspiring. It's um, grounding. It's you know, and the call to action as well. And um, thank you. Thank you. And, I, and I'm, I'm now going to pass to Jamie because um, I think that's what I meant to be doing because she'd like to say something as well as part of, of our closing. And um, yeah, it's that sense of collective. I think it's quite amazing how we've managed to hold this in this virtual space with all of our um, different, you know, it, unstable internet. I don't know why mine's more unstable in Point Shep and Tamaki Makoto than people in other parts of rural Aotearoa. But yes, um, we've held that collective from the beginning to the end. And I hand back now to the collective that, that brought this for, for us all, all those there in Otatahi. Kia ora. <laughs> Kia ora, Jack. Tēnā koe. Dr. Elizabeth Kiriko, just such a powerful message to finish. Um, I don't know, did you see, um, you're, you must be the most popular person because um, the folks here had you up on the big screen and life were bigger than life size. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so yeah, I tried to have it so that my video was showing yes, that. I could, um, in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So um, yeah, you're, you're, you're a massive hit here with, with these folks and, and it's lovely that, that they're all here behind me. So yeah, that was just such a powerful message. And I couldn't have thought, um, we couldn't have had a better way to finish it. So I'm just so thankful and gosh, you're such a hard act to follow. So and I'm not going to um, try to in any way. This is just a bit of a summary, summing up. And some of these notes were from, well, to be quite honest, we didn't really think about having a, a summing up, but it, it really did feel quite right. But a lot of this is just a brain dump and some notes from like at 4 a.m. And some of it's Jack's um, been able to help me with. So kia ora, I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, look, thinking about PATH and I, and I showed in my slides at the beginning, our vision of, of trans people having full access to appropriate healthcare um, and healthcare providers having um, access to information and resources to be able to provide that care. Just thinking about that, um, yeah, look, I think this has been a massive step forward in terms of how we've been able to, um, to do some parts of that. Um, and particularly, first thing I mentioned is the education side of things. Um, massive success, I think. I'm, I'm so grateful to the education committee folks, plus the others, um, for, for such a great day, but also right throughout, all of our presenters have done uh, amazing work. And I think some of the folks here I've been discussing it with have been highlighting how we've just been able to just discuss topics in so much more depth and, and talk about some, some of these issues that might be a little bit more um, a little bit more challenging sometimes, like things like detransition, et cetera. But you know, we're getting to that level of maturity now that we can actually be starting to have some of these discussions. So I was gonna be summing up. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm really thinking about like this the strength and resilience that that we're showing as, as a group. Of, and talking about the group of everybody who's working professionally or um, working for trans health, showing strength and resilience and, and a real time of challenge. And I think that's really illustrated well by um, Julia Debray shared a document um, this morning, she shared a drawing by, by some parents who showed um, both the, the, the stormy clouds, which, which depicted like the systemic barriers that, that, that their children face, but also the, the, the beauty of their authentic self um, depicted it as rainbows. And I think that, that that kind of reflects a lot of, of what, what, we're, we're, what we're facing at the moment. And one thing that I've really heard is a lot of um, time, we're hearing about some really good things happening, but too often we're relying on like single individuals working often in, in, in isolation. And that's often how it's been in Aotearoa and our history, um, the services um, for, for gender affirming healthcare or, or, or um, for, for trans people, um, just depending on an individual in one region, just stepping up. Um, and I was having a conversation with Dr. Rebecca Nichols here, um, who's a GP, who's the DHB liaison person here, um, saying that, um, you know, what happens, um, she'd had some people talk to her to say, well, why don't you just do more clinics, to see more people yourself? And she said, look, what if I get hit by a bus? You know, we need to have 
more people and thinking about what Teddy said about the number of trans people, it might be 10%, it might be 1%, and it'll be interesting when Stats NZ comes out with some data. But, you know, look, we, we, it really shows that we need to have most, if not all GPs doing this um, and having, having a specialised few um, people in certain areas is not going to meet the needs of our communities. So we can't be done just about individuals in isolation. Um, yeah, this, this needs to be growing and, and it is growing. So yes, this is a time of challenges, the, um, the, the stormy clouds and, and Julia's um, picture. Um, and, and also um, Jack mentioned it um, as well around um, misinformation and anti-trans movement and the fear it generates. It can really limit what we think is possible to achieve. And you know, also other things like Teddy mentioned how Australia there um, and also many other countries which we'd compare ourselves to having lower surgeries widely accessible why can't we? I think this is a real national shame. But there is some hope. So thinking about the rainbows, um, you know, Jack mentioned Bell versus Tavistock being overturned. We've got the ICD coming into force. So that's moving. I know not everybody uses the ICD in the healthcare system and some of us are still stuck in the DSM, but you know, the ICD has moved being um, trans, the, the trans related diagnoses, gender related diagnoses out of the mental health and into conditions related to sexual health, so something that's much more appropriate. We're also seeing the, the changes in our healthcare systems um, and some political will, willingness for change. So I think that's really positive, another part of the rainbow. Um, I think it really provides a great opportunities for us to be working together more closely across the country. So, um, so that's a, a really positive thing. So obviously thinking back to PATH's mission, um, obviously we're a membership organization he tangata, he aha te mea nui o te aho ao. What is the most important thing in the world? He tangata, he tangata, he tangata. So it's the people, it's the people, it's the people. Can't do this all as individuals in isolation. We are the hundreds of people who gathered here, but we're actually also many more who, who aren't here. So um, it, it's really going to, to you all now um, to, um, you know, we've had a big event. Um, and, and sometimes these big events are, are the seeds for the relationship building. But, you know, um, we need to make the most of these limited um, networking opportunities. But um, then I think the real growth actually comes when um, it actually becomes, moves out to being smaller groups working together and the, these coffees and, and these really building those relationships um, and, and really growing the strength there. So this is the end of the symposium path has done. I guess what we're thinking about is a, as a biennial or every two year thing. Um, and no doubt we will again. Um, here's hoping that, that Tamaki Makoto will be able to come out of lockdown and, and help. Um, and, and that the, the COVID thing will be a thing of the past. So we'll be able to come back together in person for the next path of symposium. So we'll have another photo like I showed at the beginning of us all there together. Um, I know, and I think it came through in some of the, the emotion that we saw today that, that the path is mostly volunteers and, and, and um, staff as well, uh, th those who are getting paid. Um, we're all actually really quite exhausted right now. <laughs> yeah, so, so some folks are hearing that. So actually it, it, it falls on everyone to be able to reach out and build those networks and relationships that can't just fall, fall on those, um, those few who, who are organizing events as well. I think it also really takes humility and caring, caring from all of us um, in terms of the processes that we're working through, in terms of being able to come here and, and reaching out and putting ourselves, um, Kerry mentioned, putting ourselves out there, Kerry mentioned at the beginning, having brave spaces. And it was great. I think that was a really great way to set the tone for the symposium. So I really just want to acknowledge that. Um, and I, I've also been really, really hardened to hear um, that really that 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 uh, humility and caring really coming through very, really, really strongly in the discussions um, throughout throughout the symposium. So yeah, as Teddy um, said in his fabulous talk yesterday, um, the lateral violence is often trauma talking, and gatekeeping is not informed consent. All of us here are vulnerable to settling for a pragmatic setting, second or third best options. But together, we're together, then we can be brave enough to aim for what trans and non-binary, binary and non-binary trans people think uh, and our whānau deserves to be fully who we are. So um, I'm going to finish with, it with, with some, some big mehis, uh, a big mehi to, to Francis. I don't know if you're, don't feel like you have to, but you've been doing so much work there in the background. I don't know if you're able to give us a little wave. Um, 
and I just you, you've just been doing a massive amount of work. I don't know if you've had time to stop and rest at all. So so thank you so much, Francis. Really appreciate that. Um, and also um, massive mihi to all of the folks here. It's been so lovely to have these these wonderful folks here. And I don't know you you, you may not be able to you may be able to see in the background. This is actually the space we were originally going to have for the um, the actual symposium with, with two hundred people. All, all fit into, all crammed into here, um, but that didn't eventuate. But we were still able to get that space, um, uh, get the space, and it's been wonderful to have you all here. And it's just been so many of you all doing, um, doing just, just nonstop. We've all really just been nonstop, but it's been wonderful to have you all here. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it with that, and um, and I'll, I'll hand it over to um, uh, to our folks for our closing cut again. Oh, good me to a Tahi Kanu to me here, Koto, who who my name is in the. Firstly, I'm going to actually hand it to my Fanoma here, to to not only to me to each and every one of you, but Elizabeth. Namihi mo mahi ira 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 tangata ira tangata. So mighty. Can I ask me who? Ahi uh, mehi aroha mihi mahanaka kui, korua ko Jack, uh, tina korua mo o uh, kuriro mo to kauhau uh, i tinei wā. Engari uh, he mihi mai oha, mai ngā hapu uh, o Waitaha, te waipaunamu hoki, uh, ngā mihi aroha koutou kātua, tātou ngā kaimahi, ngā uh, tangata, Waiora, Tangata Hora, uh, Mona, uh, Tangata, I Rotui, Aotearoa, Tina Tato Katoa. Uh, mai te uh, uh, Ropu, uh, Kahukura Pounamu, uh, He Mihi Aroha, Kia Kue Ti Whana Whana, uh, Moto, uh, Mihi Tino Whakaherehera, uh, Tino Honore, uh, Mona, uh, tato katoa. A special mihi from our Fano here in um, Ōtautahi to you, Eri Hapati, Elizabeth, Jack. Um, so wonderful to be here um, and Afi, Wendy and all the Fano here today. Karen and I especially want to say uh, it's good to see you again. We we'll see you in lots of places, but today especially. And thank you for your mahi and uh, the Whare Paramata. Uh, kia koe hoki, uh, he tino aroha. It's, um, I suppose, for me especially, for our mokupuna, who we have here with us today, uh, uh, tama, uh, he, uh, tamariki whāngai, he whāngai uh, to my tu. Um, he's part of what we're all hoping for the future, that uh, the world that he is part of now and will be in the future will be as um, embracing and powerful as it has been for us um, and, and, and although there are times when it's tough we have to build each other up to carry and continue this kaupapa um, to make it safe for all of our whānau mō ngā haue whā. So I just wanted to say thank you again it's lovely to see you and um, as a whānau we all want to afu from Waitaha here at Te Tihi o Kahukura, Te Eringa Kahukura, Te Heru o Kahukura. These are the uh, port hills of Ōtautahi um, and uh, so resplendent with our pūrāko, our atua to take care of us. And so I wanted to acknowledge that because Kahukura Pounamu is our name for our ropu here. And we want any of you, when you're in Ōtautahi, to please come and let us know, or your, our friends here now, to, uh, so we can connect when you're here, and as a ropu, as a ropu. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll just hand back to Wendy, and thank you all. And we are going to have a waiata, and you have to all try and try and join us, <laughs> as, as hard as that is on Zui. Um, but we thought we would be for... Yeah. The, and then we'll have karakia, but we thought that for um, today, um, we would go with, what is it again? Tūtira um, oh, mai. Tūtira mai. 
Ngāiwi, tato tato, and that's all of us standing up, working together. That's what this wife is about from our beautiful um, Hua Te Whanau, uh, the Reverend, and we thought that's a good one, and you really should have known it all. Something. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 we yeah. should be able to get through this. <laughs> so, so we can do this. So we'll okay. do the waiata now, and then we'll just close with the karakia and, and, and um, come with it. Bid everyone aroha to go home. Mm. To tira mai ngā iwi, tato tato we. To tira mai ngā iwi, tato tato we. Unmute everybody. Me te I think of your father, Uncle Bill, and I just wanted to acknowledge that right here because we've been talking about him every time I see him, I see you. So that's a special name. Tuatika, <laughs> Na mihi ki a koutou, pai tō haere, <laughs> te kainga. 